at the plant. After the repeated explosions, it was decided to pull out as many people as possible that evening, leaving only essential personnel. The plant manager, Mr. Yoshida himself, came out of the command center and into the corridor. He told us it was okay for us to leave and thanked us for our cooperation. We didn't actually do anything, but that's what he said, so we had permission to go. When I left, I felt tremendous relief that I was finally out. I thought about my family waiting at the evacuation center. I wanted to go to them quickly to see their faces. But when I drove out the front gate and headed away from the plant, it was completely dark. There wasn't a single car with headlights coming toward me. It was a very strange sight. As Takashi headed for his family, he noticed that there were messages on his cell phone. They'd been sent in the previous few days, but hadn't reached him because his phone had no reception inside the plant. One of the messages was from his daughter, who had celebrated her birthday at the evacuation center on March 13th. Now it is... She said, this is now. I'm eight years old now. I'm fine, so please don't worry. <laughs> it was that sort of ordinary message. It wasn't particularly important. It didn't have any special words or anything. It was the simplicity of it. Ishimori Elementary School, one of the evacuation sites in Tamura, was 40 kilometers from the plant. But was that far enough to be safe? People had reached the breaking point. Staying there with no access to reliable information, Munehiro and his family were faced with a decision. Once the hydrogen explosion happened at Unit 3, we just didn't know what would happen next. The reactor building was blown open. If the pressure vessel exploded too, it would all be over. So we thought we'd better leave before that happened. There were other plant employees among the evacuees in the gym. We got together and tried to figure out what to do. We knew things were really bad. I was surprised when I was told that we had to leave. We were managing with our friends at the evacuation center, and now I was being told that it was dangerous to stay. Then it clicked in my own mind that we were still in danger. Most of the people at the evacuation center had come by bus, so they had no cars they could use to leave. So people asked relatives, friends, anybody they could to come and pick them up, and get them out of there. We didn't make a general announcement. We just talked to individuals. Otherwise, there would have been panic and a mob scene. So we talked to individuals, starting with younger people. And people with kids. Yeah, we gave them priority. After telling people to leave the evacuation center, Munehiro and his family waited for relatives to come and pick them up, and left Fukushima Prefecture. Most of the evacuees who stayed behind at that time wound up leaving Tamura by the end of March. The day after the explosion at Unit 3, there was an explosion at Unit 4, and the reactor vessel in Unit 2 also suffered damage. According to TEPCO estimates, 
the radioactive material released during March alone reached 900 quadrillion becquerels, making Fukushima one of the worst nuclear accidents in history. Fourteen months later, some of the people evacuated from Okuma have settled in the city of Aizu Wakamatsu, located more than 100 kilometers from the Fukushima Daiichi plant. Munehiro and his family had temporarily moved further away. But they settled in Aizu Wakamatsu for the sake of their children's schooling. Recently, their son Sodai had his thyroid gland tested under a program run by the prefecture. These are the results of the thyroid exam. It says that Sodai has a small lump or cyst, but that a second examination isn't necessary. They found something, but they're not going to do anything about it. Strange. The prefecture says that at the present time, it's highly unlikely that Sodai's condition is the result of radiation exposure. And since the lump is benign, a second examination is not needed. I called them, and they said that the A2 diagnosis means there's nothing abnormal and no further exam is needed. They just repeated what it says here. They also said that 95% of the time, thyroid conditions in children develop slowly, so that there's nothing to worry about. They'll examine Sodai again in two years, and if they find something wrong, they'll take the next step then. They assured me that there was no need to worry for the next two years, and that I should just wait and see. That was all they had to say. But as a parent, that's hard to accept. The Ishidas have no choice but to accept the prefecture's policy of providing one examination every two years and seeing how things develop. After the disaster, Munehiro started working at the Fukushima plant again. He's involved in the cooling operations for the reactors there and is working toward the day when his children will be able to return to Okuma. We didn't know when the walls might come falling down. And radiation, it can't be seen by the eye. You can't tell where it's high and where it's low. There could be a lethal dose of radiation nearby, so you can't just go wherever you like. Those were the conditions we worked in. We had no idea how much radiation we were being exposed to or when. That was really scary. Whenever he went off to work, he'd say, I came back last time, but I might not come back this time. You said that to me, and the kids too, didn't you? To tell the truth, I'd like to feel resentment, but it's complicated. My husband works for the plant, so I can't really be resentful. It is complicated. After all, we were able to live in Okuma in the first place because the plant was there and gave me work. That's what made it all possible. Will you continue working there? Yes, at least for now. There aren't any other jobs available, so I'll continue as long as there's work. Although more than a year has passed since the catastrophe, the former residents of Okuma have no prospects yet of returning to their hometown. Many people lost their jobs and are now living as refugees with uncertain futures. 
For nearly 30 years, Takashi Sato had worked at the power plant. He evacuated to Aizu Wakamatsu after the disaster. He lost his job because of the accident at Fukushima Daiichi, but decided to continue working in the nuclear power field. <laughs> I am from Okuma, so this life I have here is really the life of a refugee. I can't go home, that's for sure. I want to go home, but I can't. That makes my feelings pretty complicated. I've worked in the nuclear power field ever since I graduated from high school. That's really been my main occupation. It's the only thing I know how to do. I can't fish, or raise crops, or take up dairy farming. Well, what about going into public service, or becoming a regular office worker? If I were younger, I might give it a try, if I were in my early 20s or so. But I'm in my late 40s, and my child's still young. The idea of switching to another field is inconceivable. For the sake of work, Takashi now lives alone, away from his family. He currently commutes to the Onagawa nuclear power plant, where he's begun working as a safety inspector. What would you do if they asked you to come back to work at Fukushima Daiichi? If TEPCO asked me, I wouldn't hesitate to go. It's work, so I'd go. Like I said before, that's how I make my living. because of the plant and was destroyed by the plant. Even after the disaster, many of the residents still work here. According to estimates made by TEPCO in June 2012, Fukushima Daiichi is still emitting 10 million becquerels of radioactive material per hour. The nightmare that engulfed this community isn't over yet. <laughs> <laughs>